when we first played through this campaign, we would have never imagined that we would get some of these names to be voices on our show. I mean, I feel like a broken record when I just keep fanboying over the actors who are playing these characters, but I'm a fanboy for all the actors who are playing these characters. Ah. Oh no, they're all so good. I can't believe these people are working on the show. It's an interesting circumstance to be developing the animated series where I created and performed so many of these characters. And then now we have the opportunity to bring them to life. And I should not play all of them. I am genuinely really excited for and have been excited to find the right people to breathe life into these characters in ways that I never could. Just like the player characters, all of these NPCs that you've seen, they have a piece of Matt in them. They feel like friends. So when we were casting it, there has been that deep amount of levels of consideration to make sure that they will truly be the exact perfect fit. Part of us will always want Matt to voice every old man, woman, child, but it's been surreal to hear the guests we've had come in and bring some of these long cherished characters to life. One of those NPCs that is beloved by all is Sean Gilmore of Gilmore's Glorious Goods. And after a lot of back and forth with Matt, Matt himself was actually the one that was very adamant about allowing someone else to take a shot at this beloved character. I wanted to make sure that his importance to the story was given the care that it deserved. We really wanted to find somebody who is funny and still full of life, and I think we found him. Sunil Mahotra has done an incredible job of portraying Gilmore. Sean Gilmore is, in my imagination, a naughty, sexy, mischievous cat. If he's not selling his wares, he's selling himself. Sunil brings playfulness, charisma, respect, I feel very close to Gilmore. Just full of energy and life and verve. That is like hand in glove for me. He is bringing a very unique uh, flair and passion to the role and is really good at hooking a finger under Vax's chin still. What we ended up with was enough of Matt's version of the character that we still recognize him as the Gilmore that we fell in love with, but this new spin, a new take that has an authenticity that we could not have gotten if Matt had played the character. The voice really hits everything that you want out of Gilmore. I'm, I'm quite pleased. <laughs> as Matt painted it, Exandria is such a broad, diverse, crazy place filled with all kinds of voices from around the realm and to populate that with voice actors who aren't just the main eight cast members of Critical Role was always a big goal of ours, to make this world feel expansive and real. This show is a great big stew of unbelievable casting choices and people that you have been waiting for and knew were gonna be part of it. We are blessed with choice when it comes to extremely talented people that happen to be friends of ours. And so there have been opportunities in the series to have people like Harry Payton. Not unfamiliar to Critical Role fans for his portrayal as Shakasta or in Undeadwood. Sovereign Uriel is a huge part, which meant that we needed a huge voice. Harry Payton was someone that we turned to for that, and he delivered instantly. He has a level of regality to his voice that you just can't ignore. He just brings so much weight and integrity to Uriel and gives it even more character than I would have imagined. We're trying with some of the casting to make sure that everybody you want to hear who's been a part of the family sneaks in there every now and then. Felicia Day is a perfect example of someone you will hear rattling around Haldori. You'll hear her doing her level best to defend Amon against its enemies in a few of the early episodes. For Amon, as one! We would not be here without Felicia Day. She took a chance on us, she saw the possibility, and we knew that we wanted to use her. We also have people that we have known and love, such as Bobby Hall. Okay, we'll take you in, but the bear waits outside. Good old Bobby Hall got to play some guards in some of the earlier episodes. He blew us away. He was he was phenomenal. Also stepping up for a character favorite from the Vox Machina campaign is Eugene Bird as Jarrett. Jarrett got a new role in this show. He is now a captain of the Arms of Amon in the animated series. I think Jarrett is one of the coolest characters in the campaign. Jarrett is the kind of guy that you need to prove it to him. You need to prove it to him more than a few times. Eugene is 
played such a wonderful human being and such a wonderful person. He was in Gears of War with me and I was so excited when he was cast. General Krieg is a character from our early home game days that some fans may not be super familiar with, but he did reside on the Council of Tal'Dorei, and we had to turn to a big voice for his character. Hello, uh, my name is David Tennant, and I'm playing General Krieg. David Tennant's in our show? What? Being able to bring him on board to, to bring an NPC like Krieg to life, a pre-stream NPC, to, so he really is the one that brings it to life for the community as well for the first time. I can't believe you made it out alive. He was so excited to be part of this project because he had seen the path that it took. I, I think it's fantastic. I think this is how all shows should be pitched. They should all start in somebody's front room and end up on television. Why not? Knowing what that character is going to be required to do, David was fantastic to work with. We've also had guest appearances by Tony Hale. Of Veep fame is our fence. He transformed into this slimy, scheming fence so brilliantly. Playing the head cleric is Anjali Bamani. Her dulcet tones matched perfectly with the character. Don't want to forget Cassandra DiRolo, sister of Percy, played by Esme Creed Miles. The Tavern Keeper, which was a fan-created character, voiced by Mason Alexander Park, who was incredible. They knocked it out of the booth. The goddess voice of the Everlight is Tracy Toms. Incredible voice, incredible performer. And One Punch Man himself, Max Middleman, as Desmond, the coachman for the devious Briarwoods. Bryn, who is a brand new character to the series, is voiced by Stacy Raymond. Also in the Whitestone crew as Keeper Yenin, we have Gina Torres. Your first take of her is really someone of great calm and spirituality, but she has a much greater agenda. She also has a couple of tricks up her sleeve, which make her a badass. When it came to the character of Archibald Desne, we made some changes to the character overall and also wanted to push this young rebel leader with a voice print that we thought would do it justice. We're big fantasy fans, so again, in Shooting for the Moon, we reached out to Dominic Monaghan, and he said yes. Archibald is a kind of buccaneering, suave man of short stature. He tends to let his fists and his axe do the talking. He just sounds like such a badass dwarf. Then we need to make our next move count. Gather every able-bodied fighter in Whitestone. We have a hobbit on our show. It's, it's amazing. Also, Stephen Root. We are huge fans of his from everything from Office Space to Barry. The way that he chews and works with his words gave a whole new shape to the character of Anders. Tick tock, tick tock, you're wasting time. Vedmeyer also cuts an extremely intimidating profile and we knew with a half giant of his size, we needed a voice to match it. You can't go wrong with Royer McCann, the hound from Game of Thrones. Dr. Anna Ripley is another one of the Briarwood henchmen that uh, we knew we needed to bring to life. And Kelly Hu does an incredible job of that. Don't play dumb. It won't end well for you. God, Kelly is a villain. It's a really, really sharp performance. So two of the NPCs that obviously jumped to our mind in the beginning was Lady Allura Vysorin and obviously Lady Kima of Vord. Big shoes, big characters, beloved by all. And we quickly turned to um, an angelic voice from Game of Thrones in Dira Varma for Lady Allura Vysorin. She has this, this grace and this prim quality to her. I must object, Sir Fintz. We don't even know what the creature is. Demon? Elemental? And how do you propose we capture it? She was able to deliver this very delicate, soft, but um, powerful dialogue. I love you, Matt. I love your voice as Allura, but it's so amazing <laughs> to hear the woman come to life. And then her partner in crime, Kima of Vord, played by the incredibly funny Stephanie Beatriz. She has just the perfect cadence and the perfect deadpan delivery and just nails it with her total disdain for the entire group of Vox Machina. She's large and in charge, even though she's under four feet tall. Stephanie is a fantastic badass of the utmost variety. Playing a badass is an internal thing. It is about the space that you've decided that you take up. It isn't about how small or big you are. She just like, got it immediately and sounds 
exactly like I pictured Kima sounding. While I miss Matt uh, as Lady Kima, I'm pretty happy with who we got. <laughs> Another immensely talented voiceover actress, the illustrious Grey Griffin. Uh, she is our Delilah Briarwood. Villains, I've been playing them for decades and they're just so deliciously wonderful to play. Delilah is a very complicated villain. I liken her to sort of like a, a big cat. I'll kill you when, when I'm feeling like it, but right now I'm just having fun. She grasped so many facets of the, the subtlety and that brimming intensity and threat while still keeping that cordial, presentary upper crust. She relishes in the, in the villainous aspect, but she really gets the, the heart of Delilah. She does do horrible, horrible things, but it's all in the name of love, so you have to root for her just a little bit. We also have the talented Darren DePaul joining us as Kieran Stonefell. He's grotesque, he's evil, he's disgusting, he is a mess. So I'm sure we're like, of course, Darren, he's disgusting, he's evil, he's a mess. We've got to make it him. Darren is uh, I, I'm not convinced as human. He can make creatures come out of him that don't really make sense. Nobody's going to get into that part of the basement of their voice like Darren can. Ah! Death to the DeRolos! There's the great joy in playing someone who just doesn't give a damn. Watching this universe come to life, it's bigger and more complex than I even imagined. These are adult stories, adult themes, and because it's animated, it means that you can do so much more. Anything that you can think of, anything that you can dream of, that can be brought to life in the world of animation. Who would have thought that we would get to tell these stories in this medium and people aren't ready for how vibrant and exciting it looks? It's very like those cartoons that you watched as a kid. It kind of reeks of nostalgia, but with swear words. And what could be better? It feels like our little group is just starting to expand and grow. For many, many years, this was truly a world that only existed in a handful of people's imagination. It feels like these characters that we have lived with for years now have been given new life. The fact that there are all these critters who are invested in this means that, fuck, it needs to be seen, it needs to be made. This is because of you, and it almost brings tears to my eyes. It's, it's kind of an amazing thing. Indulge and engage with this moment that you helped create, because without you, it would not have been. Knowing that the legend of Vox Machina was creator made from top to bottom, there's a certain magic to that that I don't think you can get anywhere else. People say stuff like, this is your world, you created this stuff. Like I, to a degree, helped to facet it, but I am one of many storytellers in this. Me and all the players at the table and the community that watched this and all these artists, developers and designers. This is a continued expansion of that collaboration and collaboration is key. This isn't my world anymore. This is our world. <laughs>